then the actual lesson. So as said, today we will focus on kind of understanding the geometric object and spatial data model. Uh, so how we can do different uh, different geometries using Shapely module, and then we basically have an exercise uh, for for this week, which is basically that you do those yourself uh, and, and create some functions that do different stuff with with those geometric objects. So that's kind of. Okay, there is some older learning goals. I need to change that. Uh, but yeah, uh, so how many of you are really familiar with geometric objects and the da spatial data model? I guess it's kind of a thing that you most probably understand at, at certain uh, kind of level at least because these are the stuff that we typically work with in, in, in GIS although these kind of different objects like points, multipoints, line string, linear ring, multi-line string, polygon and so on so these are really kind of familiar at least for geographers I guess that are most, most of us but they are kind of he, well hidden at least in ArcGIS. So for example, if you check the attribute table, you don't actually see the spatial data in there. You only see the attributes. Uh, it's possible to extract like centroid of a uh, polygon or get the X and Y coordinates from there. But uh, by default, fault, they are kind of hidden in ArcGIS. But basically what you have there is this kind of present, uh, representation of, of this different kind of geometric objects uh, that are quite common, uh, commonly used. So we have points, we have lines and we have polygons. Those are the basic, uh, basic uh, geometric data types. And then uh, you might have also geometric collections. So you might have multiple polygons, multiple points uh, and also in Python it's possible to have a collection that combines all of these different uh, geometries together, which is not typically uh, cannot be done in ArcGIS if I remember right. So, as said, the Shapely module is kind of the package in Python where we can use and, uh, and create these kind of uh, objects. Uh, so, with the uh, library, the Shapely, you can create lines. Uh, yeah, but let's continue. So basically, 
as said, so we have this uh, module called Shapely, and you can basically import the whole package just like this. And of course, this uh, requires that you have installed the Shapely module. Uh, so if you don't have it, you will get an error. Uh, typically, when you are importing stuff from Shapely, you don't actually import the whole whole package. Uh, instead, you usually, well, quite often, you just import specific pieces out of them. So we can, for example, import the kind of point, line, string, and polygon objects from from this shapely dot geometry. So this is kind of a sub module that uh, includes all different uh, all different geometric objects. So we can call from shapely dot geometry import point. Let's import also line. So it's we typically uh, when we discuss about line strings, we are just using word line. But basically, in, in Python, this is called a line string. And then we have polygon. So we can import all those different uh, data types and, and, and data objects from, from Shapely. And if everything goes right, you don't get any error and everything should be okay. Uh, so basically, how you can create uh, a simple geometry such as point is that you basically just call. This is basically it's a it's an object, but basically it is you can think it as a as a as a function. And basically, how you call a function is that you put the parentheses, and inside here. Uh, what this point object wants is are the uh, x and y coordinates. So we can, for example, put 2.2, which is the x, and 4.2, which is the y coordinate. And then when we execute, we should have this kind of point 1. And actually, when we uh, just execute this point one in IPython, it automatically kind of visualizes the point for you. It, it doesn't look that pretty, but at least you see something that this is a point uh, of, of with these coordinates. Let's also create another point, point two, uh, and give it somewhat different uh, coordinates. So this point object, so by default, okay, there was some typo there. Uh, so this doesn't actually uh, check at all what those numbers are. So for example, this 7.2 minus 25.1 uh, you might guess that they might be deci in decimal degrees, so kind of latitude, longitude points. But you could put 25,000, 6,000, minus million, or whatever. So these object doesn't, objects doesn't actually care about the projection at all, or what in, in, in which uh, projection you actually represent the data. So all it kind of... Uh, considers are that they are numbers and they are x and y and why is why is it so is that because we have different pro projections for example in uh, EUREF TM35 we represent the data as, as meters from the equator uh, so it kind of uh, doesn't doesn't make any requirements of, of these values that you insert so that's just important to, to know. Uh, then let's put the third point with these uh, coordinates. And now we basically have three different points that we can 
take a look at. Uh, oh yeah, and then basically you can also, these were points in, in 3D, but you can, of course, you might have a elevation for example, so of course the point can also have three uh, values, for example 24, 24 uh, minus 10.0 and then some height, for example 200 and well maybe not that but some like uh, 1.5 decimal degrees. So now we would basically have a point, this doesn't know how to represent it in 3D but basically when when checking uh, the type you should see well you will see that it is it's a it's a point so this is kind of where it comes from so it comes from the shapely dot geometry then we have this kind of point object in the beginning. So all these different points here are these shapely geometry objects. And when we print those points, you will see uh, this kind of representation. And this is something that comes from a more kind of generic GIS uh, library called GEOS. How many of you have heard of GEOS? G-E-O-S. It's kind of really fundamental uh, library. For example, PostGIS is built on top of that and all the functions. And, and basically this Shapely is also kind of Python representation or Python version of, of that GEOS library. So it follows the kind of standard from, from GEOS just something that might be useful to know. Uh, then, so basically, and this printed representation is how GEOS basically shows stuff. Uh, if we print the point 3D, uh, you can see that now we have this a bit different uh, representation of the point, so we actually have the Z value here so it, it tells you that you actually have something which is three dimensional here and we have the three different coordinates in here. Cool. Uh, then of course what you can get out of, of these points is that you can when you say point one and dot and in a similar manner as in pandas, you, you have all different uh, functions available in here. You can see that there are many different kind of things, functions and attributes that you can actually get out of the, out of the object. For example, the X coordinate might be quite useful at some point y coordinate you can directly get by pointing the or getting with the x uh, parameter here. Uh, you can also get point both of them at the same time which basically gives you this kind of array of x and y coordinates of that point. Why it is an array because now we are having a point but when you have a polygon for example so you might you have multiple x's and multiple y coordinates so they they come out as as these kind of uh, arrays in, in in this manner cool mm -hmm. so what we can do uh, is that let's take out the point coordinates from here. So I create a new variable called point chords and for there I say that point one uh, chords. So that is 
also one useful uh, kind of function of that you can get or the attribute that you can get out of these point one or these geometric objects. So when you call point one dot chords, what you end up having is this kind of shapely coordinate sequence uh, object of of that. And So that's kind of, uh, let's see what we can do with that. So here you basically can get the same, same stuff out, out from here and the X and, and Y coordinate. Uh, what is useful uh, in many cases when doing uh, some analysis is that you might want to see how far away from uh, point A is from point B. So we can do that in a quite simple way. So as you might remember, we had this point one and then we had point two with different uh, coordinates. So it's fairly easy to actually calculate the distance between those. So we can say that point dist equals to point one and then we can find this kind of uh, function here called distance, which is pretty neat. So basically what this function takes is that, say uh, it should be the other point. So now we would basically be measuring how far away this point one is from point two. And let's see what it gives us. Well, it seems to be 29.72. Uh, do you know what, what this number, what is the kind of measure we are having here? So if the distance is 29.7, is it meters, kilometers? What, what does it actually show you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the really important thing to kind of understand when doing this uh, analysis uh, in Python is that in ArcGIS, it kind of does things automatically uh, quite a lot in background. So when you're working with shape files, for example, it kind of uh, automatically reprojects that data for you. And when you are basically doing, for example, calculating distances between certain layers, it kind of automatically put those coordinates on the same coordinate system. But in Python, you really need to kind of take care that the projections between different data sets are the same. Because the distance that, for example, here, uh, what it gives you is the distance in, in that measured with decimal degrees if our input uh, points are uh, put on decimal degrees. If they are put in some metric system such as uh, Euro TM35 that we use here in Finland, so then they would be meters. But you kind of need to understand that uh, it's quite crucial to be aware what is the uh, projection of your of your data inside because you might get totally wrong answers if if the points are in in separate projections so that's kind of important to to know cool um yeah then we could point the distance print that out uh Cool, so that is point. Uh, there are different stuff that you can do with it, but maybe kind of, yeah. Uh, quick question. I don't know if it's like relevant at all, but what was the B in the array of the point coordinates? Like there was array for both of the coordinates and there was a B. It wasn't like X and Y in the array, right? Wasn't it? Mm. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, I'm now not 
totally sure. I will check that out, but it's something related to how this shapely uh, represents the, the, the values. Um, yeah, but I will check that. It, but it's, yeah, it might be more uh, intuitive to have X and Y there, but it's, it's not. But yeah, I will check what the D stands for. It might be some data. I don't know, but let's let's see. I will come back to that later. Uh, yeah, but then uh, going to how you can create lines. Uh, so, well, lines of course consist of multiple coordinates and, and multiple points, and then when you connect those points together, you actually get a line. So pretty simple uh, thing that is quite familiar to all of us. So when you are creating lines in, in Python, uh, you might remember that we actually imported from shapely.geometry uh, uh, this kind of uh, line string object. So it works just in a similar manner as when creating points. So we can basically create a line string or line using this line string function and then inside here we basically said that what are those uh, points that actually creates the line. So how we should put the point or the coordinates inside the line string is that it should either it takes the actual point objects that we created so we can basically put these three points that we we just did before and put those inside a list. So that is one way of doing it. Other way of doing it is that you don't necessarily need to kind of create this point object beforehand, but you can create these uh, coordinate tuples that you put inside. So this is basically the same thing. Uh, these are doing the same thing. These two variables here, line and line two. So let's see. Uh, so we need to put the points inside a list. So we had point one, we had point two, and we should have point three. So if everything goes right, we should see that, okay, it seems that our coordinates seem to be having this kind of V formation. So now we have a, have a line here. Uh, in a similar manner, I just quickly show that I can create that line using these coordinate tuples. So this tuple is similar to list, but you cannot change the values in there. But I can just create a few of them. Let's see what we have. Four and seven and Let's see if we make another one. So in this way we can also create, uh, well, it seems to be some somewhat similar looking but on the other direction. So it's fairly easy to create lines. Uh, and when we print our line, so again, we can see the geos kind of representation of, of the line. So it is this kind of line string. And what we have here is that we have those coordinate, uh, coordinate pairs separated with comma. This is not really important to, to see these uh, kind of how they are represented, but just to show you, show you that this is the kind of way how many computer softwares understand them. And as we check the type, so again, we can see that it is indeed line string. So what kind of stuff can you do uh, with, with this line? Uh, again, we can basically uh, write line and then dot, and we can basically see all sorts of stuff from here. Uh, let's go. Yeah, so how you can get these uh, drop down menus is that if you have this line object created, uh, and this works with 
all many different kind of uh, functions and, and objects that you might create in Python is that you press dot and then tabulator key. So with the tabulator key, you get kind of all different uh, available tools and, and attributes and, and such that are available. And you can either, for example, double click this and you can choose that, okay, what are the X and Y coordinates of that line? And now, as said, now as we have a line consisting of three different nodes, uh, we can see that we have those X coordinates in one array and the Y coordinates in another frame, uh, array. So, so this is basically a way how Shapely uh, keeps the data in, inside. So they are in a separate arrays like this. And the array is basically a NumPy array. I think we uh, discussed about that a little bit uh, in the previous uh, part of the of the course. Cool. Uh, let's see what else can we do. Um, so let's say that line chords equal to line x and y. So if we want to, for example, take only the uh, x coordinates from that uh, this list of or array of, of x and y's, we can, in a similar manner as taking something from a Python list. So we can actually take that uh, using the line chords at index zero. So you will get the x coordinates, and at index one, you will get the uh, y coordinates. If we try to get the z coordinates, you would get it if there would be some, but in this case, we don't have any elevation data. So it gives you an error that tuple index out of range. Just that you know. Um, cool. Then some uh, useful thing. So if we have a line, of course, our line have a centroid somewhere. So you can really easily get the centroid of that line by calling line dot centroid. And what it gives you is basically a point with certain uh, coordinates. So it's kind of uh, the geometric object that you create it knows all sorts of things by default. So when we are actually initializing these geometries, uh, it kind of uh, does at the same time all different uh, these kind of calculations. So it actually calculates what is the centroid, what is the length, uh -huh. Not centroid, but the line. What is the length? So we can see that okay, this length seems to be 52 uh, decimal degrees. In in our case, if if we would uh, put the coordinates in decimal degrees, uh, that is really useful. Um, and yeah, the centroid. So the again important thing to understand is that the centroid it's not it's not just the value that you get from there it's actually a, a point object so if you take a centroid from a line from polygon so you can actually start right away working with that centroid because it's a geometric object so might be quite quite handy in in some cases Let's also see if there would be some other useful things. Um, yeah, uh, maybe it would be. Yeah, maybe I do that later. Mm. Yeah. One cool thing that you can do 
that is really useful quite often is that you can basically create a buffer around the line this is something that people do quite often so we can create a buffer around the line around point around polygon around anything really and it can be done by using this line dot buffer or point dot buffer or whatever so basically the object that you have uh, so call that and dot and buffer and then you can specify so what is the distance so in here let's uh, consider that our data is represented in decimal degrees so distance equals to 0 0.001 so this is around if I remember right 100 meters or so so we can actually in this way create a buffer around our line and well it looks quite similar let's put a little bit might be that it doesn't actually uh, yeah well now we get a bit fatter V uh, but really handy uh, tool and, and function to to create buffers around stuff so it's it's fairly easy easy to do uh, using shapely and these geometries um, Cool. Uh, then, of course, the third really crucial geometric object that we use so often are the polygons. And again, we create them uh, really in a similar manner as before. Uh, so what the polygon data type takes as an input in a similar manner as points and, and lines is that we have these uh, uh, coordinate tuples so like these uh, and let's create one I'll just copy and paste it here so how we can create a polygon is that well first we needed to import that polygon object from Shapely well we have that already so basically when we put the first parenthesis it actually gives us that shell equals none holes equals none so again what we can already kind of see from here is that if you have a polygon you have the kind of outer ring but as we have really quite complex geometries in our world that might have holes in it so basically the first uh, parameter called shell so it actually takes the uh, polygons in a way that it doesn't have any holes uh, so it's just the outer rings uh, and then with this holes parameter you can specify that okay at these places inside this uh, polygon you have a hole so this is kind of way how we create polygons in in python but first let's just create a simple polygon that doesn't have any holes in it uh, so let's say that shell equals to and then what it takes is a list of these coordinates so let's say 2.2 not there 2.2 uh, 4.2 so that's the first node in our polygon uh, the second one is 7.2 minus 20 5.1 and the third node equals to 9.26 and uh, minus 2.456 so these are the coordinates of the shell of our polygon and let's see how does it look like well it looks quite similar as we use the same coordinates of, of those points but now we have a polygon like this quite neat uh, other way of doing polygons using the point objects uh, okay why is our point like that no okay uh, so we have these point one point two and so on uh, point three 
So we can also use those points as input uh, for our polygon, but it requires a bit, uh, it's not as easy as it could be. And this is something related to how Shapely works, uh, but I will quickly explain you how it, how it can be done. So basically what we are doing here is that we have these three uh, points, point one, point two, and point three, uh, and we actually create a loop that actually gets the coordinates from those uh, points. And this is something that you haven't seen before uh, in, in Python, or I guess you haven't seen, but it's basically that you kind of, there is a loop inside these brackets here. So we have 4p in some list, and the list that we have is actually a list of those points that, that we have, so these three ones. And then at each iteration, so 4p as point, so at each iteration we actually get the x coordinate and get the y coordinate of that point. And then we actually insert that inside a list in here, which goes inside another list. So this is one way how we can actually iterate stuff uh, in Python. I make create a test list just to maybe demonstrate this a bit. So I can specify for number, uh, number for number in range five. This, this is kind of, might be looking a bit uh, difficult to understand, a bit tricky. Uh, but what we are doing here is that we actually create this uh, loop using this typical uh, format that we have seen many times. So for num in range, and then inside uh, or indented after the colon, we would do the stuff in uh, whatever functions we want to do inside the loop. But in here, we just kind of drop that number inside this list. So this is uh, one neat way of creating list with certain amount of numbers. So this is how, how this works. And inside here, we are kind of using this same approach, but in here, we actually use the points, the point objects as input list, and then we can actually access those x and y coordinates inside that loop. And then we basically get a similar polygon. This might be a bit confusing, but this is something that you see in when you're browsing through the materials on the web so they use this kind of approach quite often and it's good to know know this approach when doing things yeah uh, but then we have this polygon and then we can actually check the geometry type for for example so we have this poly dot geom type and what this gives is the uh, well, polygon, because we have polygon here. If we would use the point one geom type, you can see that it is point. This is quite useful attribute in many cases when uh, creating GIS programs of, of your own, and the user might feed you some kind of data and you don't really know what data he uh, provides you. Is it the polygon? Is it the line? So using this geom type and querying that, okay, if it's a point, do this. If it's a, a polygon, do that. So this can be a really useful attribute to check in the beginning of your, of your script what the data actually is that is provided to this tool. So that might become quite, quite handy. And just to finish this, so of course, our line has a geom type as well. Uh, so it's kind of a nicer 
presentation of this using this type line because then it actually gives you the shapely geometry blah 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 so in this lime geom type you actually give a nice uh, text presentation of, of that geometry um, yep what um, So, in a similar manner, again, when pressing polydot, uh, you can get access to all sorts of things. One really useful is area. So, we can actually really quickly get that what is the area of our polygon, and it seems to be 86.7 uh, decimal degrees. For example, here, uh, so on. Uh, let's create another polygon. Uh, let's think that we have a world. So, world and the kind of outer bounds of, of the world is that we have minus 180, plus 180 as eastern and western kind of extremes, and then we have the 90 and minus 90 as the other uh, north and south extremes. So let's create a world first. Uh, and let's say the world exterior is polygon. And then we say that the shell is the kind of lower left, so minus 180. This is actually upper right, no lower, lower up, uh, like this, and then lower left, minus 90, and then upper, no lower uh, right. And upper, upper right. This needs to be inside the tuples. Yep. So here we have basically four nodes that are basically presenting the polygon exterior of of our world and we can check that out it should be some kind of rectangular yep so this is something that we get doesn't look nothing else than a, than a kind of bounding box uh, then we can create a hole so I said the idea here is to have a kind of exterior of the world and then have some kind of hole inside so we can first create the hole just by creating this kind of list of a list that has these coordinate tuples uh, and why we are doing it like this so I just first quickly create those so now we have this kind of 10, uh, 10 decimal degree uh, kind of uh, slice around the world that we want to get out. Uh, minus 120, 180, 170, minus 80, and then. So now we, we don't have any geometry yet. We just created a list that has a list of coordinate tuples. And now how we can create uh, the world that has a hole in its soul. So we 
uh, call this polygon and then we said that the shell is the world exterior that we created here and the holes equals to this hole here. So now when we see what we have is that least should have uh, doesn't look correct there must be some maybe I just copy and paste this from here Well, it might be the okay. Well, the idea would be it might be that this just doesn't show it because it keeps up some other part uh, earlier uh, graphics in here. Uh, but the idea is that basically with these holes you will get the hole in 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 the in the polygon inside uh, and why we actually use a list uh, or put uh, these kind of tool lists here is that basically of course you might have a polygon that has multiple holes inside so you can actually put uh, many of them in inside here it's now a bit strange that it doesn't actually show it but basically it it should uh, have a hole let's see if we print out the world okay well something strange is happening but basically this is what you should get uh, if things were to be working correctly so that you have first the polygon so the exterior of the world and then inside there you have the hole hole in, in inside maybe if i try to just copy and paste this if it would work then Okay, now, yeah, okay, so the, it was again, the, not about the program, but the user. So what was the problem here is that we actually needed to create the polygon first and then use that polygon as an input uh, here and then the holes as a separate hole. So now we can actually see that there is this kind of another uh, boundary inside inside and we can also print the world world as whole and yes now now it seems okay so that is how how it work it works and yeah so as said we can get the area uh, so the world area is something like this let's check if the world with the hole does it have a uh, somehow different area well indeed it has so we have created a world with a with a hole correctly uh, let's check what is the centroid of the world well it's a point let's print the world centroid well surprise surprise it's zero and zero I don't know why is it minus zero but anyway 
it's it's zero, so we are actually that is the location where the center of the world is. Uh, but let's check is it a different one with world as a whole? It might be that it actually isn't, but let's see. Well, yeah, it's it's the same as we didn't. Yeah, it is kind of in the middle of middle of those. Uh, then we can also what is really useful many times is that you can actually see the bounds. So what are the boundaries of your polygon? Well, now it is as we kind of think that it would be. So it's minus 180, uh, minus 90. So this is the lower left uh, kind of node of the uh, polygon. And then we have the upper right, so 180 and 90. So this is typically if you, I guess you all have heard about bounding box. Yeah, so bounding box is kind of minimum rectangular area around the polygon. So this bounds uh, attribute actually gives you the bounds of, of any uh, polygon that you put inside. We had this another poly here, so we can, for example, check what is the what are the bounds of that one. So actually, again, we get the lower left and upper right corner. So lower left bounding box would be somewhere here, and the upper right would be somewhere there. So that can be quite useful. We can also get the exterior. So interior exterior okay and let's say exterior equals to this and we can check what is the geom type well we can see that if we get the world exterior so we actually get the linear ring uh, from those strange that it keeps the older uh, polygon in here but basically if we print that we can see that we have a linear ring inside what we should see on the screen is just a line with the outer ring and of course what might be useful to know is that we can actually get the uh, We can check what is the length of our exterior here. So basically, if you want to have the length of uh, of your polygon, so yeah, the the outer ring of the length of that. So you can basically. So first thing that you need to do is really to get the exterior of that. Uh, this so now I will do the with the polygon that we have the other one so now we have the x2 like this so this is the exterior of that polygon and if we want to know the length of that so we can just call the exterior 2 and length and then we can see like how long uh, are the exterior of, of of any given polygon. Cool. Uh, then there are these multi-point, multi-line string, multi-polygons, and so on. They might be useful in some cases. So it's basically the idea is that if you think about ArcGIS and one row in your attribute table, and if that one row consists uh, more uh, kind of features or shapes than, than one point or one line. It might consist of multiple road segments, for example. So these multi-point, multi-line string and multi-polygons is kind of way how you do that. Uh, so just that you know. Uh, how you can create those is that you just call this multi-point, multi-line string uh, and insert those uh, point objects inside there. 
Uh, it's fairly easy to do, so I won't actually do it. Do it right now, but you can check the materials and, and try them out if you if you are interested. Uh, one really useful for many uh, purposes when doing analysis is that you uh, can create a bounding box. That is something that I uh, just want to show you. So you might typical cases are that you want to select certain points that are within certain. Uh, certain uh, bounding box inside that one. So there is this from shapely dot geometry import box. So this box is something uh, quite useful. So how it works is indeed that you give it the lower left uh, kind of coordinates of, of the polygon and upper right. So these two coordinate uh, pairs you need to give it and then it kind of automatically creates a bounding box for you. Uh, just create, show you. By the way, uh, we are kind of going through the materials of, uh, of our course, but it is really useful to take a look of the kind of original Documentation. So this is the documentation of this Shapely uh, uh, module of Python, and they are much more extensive uh, kind of explanation how things work. They are kind of, uh, for example, polygons. So they are nice examples of what is a valid uh, polygon and, and so on, and, and how you actually use these. So for example, checking like how did I now create a polygon for example so from these uh, this manual you can actually go and take a look and, and see a much more detailed version of how these how these things work and nice examples as well yeah so but what I wanted to show you is the box so bounding box so I just now uh, just find it here box So what we will now do is that I indeed create a bounding box uh, with minimum min x, min y, maximum x, max y. So that is how you, you create it. And let's see. Uh, bounding box. And how you can create it. Well, basically I can, for example, uh, create the bounding box using the point x, uh, point 1 uh, x coordinate and point 1 y coordinate. So this would be the uh, minimum. And let's put point 2 x and point 2 y as the uh, kind of upper right. Point one is not defined. Oh yeah, it's not. It's with the lower, like this. Yep, and now we should have a bounding box that looks like this. So this is basically done using the kind of coordinates of, of those two points and then drawing a bounding box and and as seen here so you can basically be really creative so you can use those geometric objects and feed them inside another functions and and so on so you can do quite sophisticated stuff and and uh, and, and they can be really handy in many cases that you just access these different attributes from different places Cool. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, is there some other stuff? Yeah, maybe not. So the idea.